I think lots of people will be aware of some of the diseases that affect the central nervous system. If we think about conditions like Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, lots of people will be very familiar with those terms. But what's actually going on in someone's central nervous system when that's happening? And what's really happening is neurons, which are really the central cell in your central nervous system that relays information around, that enables you to learn, to remember, to talk, are affected. And undergo a process as the disease evolves, uh, which is called neurodegeneration, or which is really the loss of function and the loss of organisation of those cells. Our driving force behind trying to, or behind the work that we've been doing, is to really give ourselves a model system that enables us to study some of the fundamental aspects of those diseases at the level of the neuron in a dish. So I think there's a combination of animals. Probably the two main species that are used are rats and mice, and they are used extensively. And whether that's to derive primary cells for cell culture work, or actually whole animal models, transgenic models, uh, all the various knock-ins, knock-outs, and knock-downs, I think there's somewhere in the region of two to 250,000 animals probably used in the UK last year for work associated with some aspect of neurodegeneration or the study of neurodegeneration. The drive for us to develop a device really came down to the recognition that what we wanted to be able to do was replicate some of the organisation of the central nervous system, but in a very stripped down way in a dish. So if you think about the organisation of even a single neuron, so a single neuron, you may have a cell body somewhere in your spinal cord and the synapse for that could be somewhere residing in your toe. The environment that the bit in your toes is exposed to versus the environment in your spinal cord are radically different. So when you're screening things or you're looking at mechanisms going on in the different compartments of the cell, there's no guarantee that what goes on in one region is going to be exactly the same as what's going on in the other region of the cell. Our ultimate aim is to try and have something out there for people to use and that they would pick up off the bench to use in the same way that currently they might pick up a 96 well plate for tissue culture or a petri dish for tissue culture or, or some of the other tissue culture plastics that are available. Uh, the, the slight difference in our device is that what it enables you to do is it enables you to grow your soma in one compartment, so your cell body sitting in one compartment, your axons then grow through and are sitting in a separate second compartment. The, it, the system is designed to be one adaptable to different protocols so people could customize it to how they wanted it to be. The other thing as well is that what you can then do is you can control that microenvironment within those different compartments in much the same way that a nervous system, that a, a neuron in your central nervous system will be, will have different compartments exposed to different conditions. One of the things that's common to many neurodegenerative diseases is injury at the level of the axon. So we thought we would try and test the device out by actually looking at some of the very, very early events that happen after an axon injury. So we had got data from proteomic analysis of injured optic nerves that gave us some insight into what the very, very early events are after an injury. And those events seem to happen at the level of some of the actin binding proteins and the actin cytoskeleton within the neuron itself. Now this is quite important and, and that is because actually we know that there are ways of modulating the actin cytoskeleton to actually slow down the, the rate at which the cell goes on to degenerate. So what we're trying to do now is use the device to really monitor very precisely what goes on at, the, at an injury site really immediately after induction of an injury. And one of the advantages of the device is it enables you to carry out these experiments in a very controlled way. You know how far away you are from the cell body, you know how far you are away from the synapse, if that's of interest to you. And then, because the device is amenable to microscopy, you can image changes occurring at the level of the axon very minutely. And that's the work that we're trying to do with the device right now.